Good evening there, everybody. What is happening? Hopefully you all are having a wonderful day today. So when it comes down to it, I thought, of course, that I would give my final fight analyzation and my fight review of the aftermath, of course, of the very great and competitive fight between the two Soviet warriors, the two top pound for pound Russian fighters at the light heavyweight class. Of course, between that and Mr. Artibeta Beev, who I believe held every single title other than that of the WBA title. And of course, Mr. Dimitri Bivol, who held that of the WBA title within that of the light heavyweight division. This has been a fight that has been talked about for many, many years within that of professional boxing. And in my view, at least for this year, probably was the second biggest fight or most important fight that could have potentially happened in boxing. Uh, you know, other than that, of course, and Mr. Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk. And of course, I believe that that rematch is going to be happening sometime in December this year. But I could be wrong. We'll see where that goes. But anyways, for those of you that did not end up seeing the fight or for those of you that did not end up hearing the results, Mr. Arthur Bedebeev, he was able to not only retain his titles, but to become, I believe, the first complete undisputed light heavyweight champion of all time. At least I believe that he is the first complete unified light heavyweight champion of all time. If he isn't, then of course someone will have to correct me. But of course, for those of you that did not end up seeing the results, Arthur Bedebeev won by that a majority decision. One of the scorecards, I believe, was 114 to 114 to draw. Another one of the scorecards was 115 to 113, seven rounds to five. Of course, a draw being six rounds to six. And of course, the last one, I believe, being 116 to 112, being eight rounds to four. Now, I thought that eight rounds to four maybe could have been slightly wide, but if you would have had it eight rounds to four, I could have maybe understood it. But let me also state this very quickly. Because I see a lot of people, especially when this fight was going on, a lot of people, they were stating that Dimitri Bivol, in their view, that they thought that he had clearly won eight rounds to four. I never seen that within this fight. I thought that within the first four rounds of this fight that Dimitri Bivol was winning. And then I think that the next four rounds, all from five to eight, I think that Arthur Bedebeev won every single one of those rounds. I think that the first round I gave to Dimitri Bivol, the first time that I watched this fight, the second round I gave to Arthur Bedebeev, the second time I watched it, I gave to Dimitri Bivol. The third round, you know, was a little bit more competitive, but I gave it to Dimitri Bivol. The fourth round, I also gave to Dimitri Bivol. So the first time that I watched this fight, I gave Dimitri Bivol three of the first four rounds. When I watched it the second time, I gave him four of the four first rounds. But not round number five was when Arthur Bedebeev was really starting to turn around, in my view. He was being a little bit more active. He was throwing a little bit more than that of Dimitri Bivol. And, of course, I did predict Arthur Bedebeev to win this fight, either by ladder stoppage or that of unanimous or majority decision. But like I stated, you know, whichever way this fight was going to go, I was not going to be surprised because there were certain things that both fighters ended up bringing to the table, in my personal view, that the other fighter was really going to have a hard time countering. I think that Better B was going to have a little bit of a hard time countering Bivol's speed and his counter right hand over the top and his elite hand jab and his great high guard. And of course, there were certain moments within this fight to where he had a very big difficulty with that. I thought that Dimitri Bivol was going to have a hard time, you know, kind of countering Arthur Better B's power and his athleticism and his body attack. And of course, he certainly did. But the reason why I picked Arthur Better B to win this fight was because I thought that he was going to be the more active of the two fighters. And certainly in the second half of the fight, especially in the middle rounds, once round five started, he definitely was. Like I said, I gave him round five. I gave him round six. Round seven in the first two minutes pretty much was all Dimitri Bivol. He even backed up and hurt Arthur Bedebeev a little bit. But then he either ran into something or something ended up happening when he was had Arthur Bedebeev up against the ropes. Because Dimitri Bivol then, in my view, ended up just losing that round. Because Arthur Bedebeev hit him with something that actually had Dimitri Bivol a little bit wobbled. And then, of course, for the remaining of that round, or the remainder of that round, excuse me, he pretty much backed up that of Dimitri Bivol and hurt him. So I had to give round seven to Arthur Bedebeev once again. Round eight, I gave the better Beev. Round nine, I believe I gave to Dimitri Bivol. Round 10, I thought Bivol took completely off. So I gave that to better Beev. And then, of course, round number 11, I think I also gave slightly to better Beev. The first round, uh, or the first time I watched the fight, round 12, I gave to Bivol. The second time watching it, I gave it to Arthur better Beev. You know, so once again, for a certain amount of people uh, asking me, do I think that this fight was a quote-unquote robbery because there are a lot of people claiming that they thought that Dimitri Bivol clearly should have won the fight or that if there was a winner of this fight that it clearly should have been Bivol? In my personal view, if there was a winner of the fight, the right man ended up winning the fight. I thought that Artur Bivol won the fight. 
I thought that he was more active. I thought that he put on the most amount of pressure between the two fighters. And I think that Bivo, that, you know, he fought a very, very good fight. But let me also state this. A lot of people are stating that Demetri Bivo fought a perfect fight. No, he actually did not fight a perfect fight. And that's the reason why I predicted Demetri Bivo to lose this fight. Demetri Bivo is a great fighter. He clearly is an A-grade level fighter. He's a great athlete, and he also has a very high-level boxing IQ. But there is a couple of faults that both Arthur Bedebeev and Demetri Bivo do have. But the problem is, is that you can get Demetri Bivo sometimes to become a little bit too tentative in terms of the punching. And Demetri Bivo, you know, overall, first things first, when I stated this, is that I did not think that he was going to have quite the body attack in this fight is what Arthur Bedebeev did. I was right about that point. Even though there were certain times to where he did have the stabbing jab to the body and he did throw a couple of right hands to the body, he did not have the body attack that an Arthur Bedebeev did. Now, of course, Bedebeev, he was not quite as active in this fight as what he usually is, you know, but you can kind of understand that because Bevo's a very slick guy. You know, he's a guy to where he uses a lot of great lateral foot movement and lateral movement. And on top of that, he's got a very good punch. He's a very great, great counter puncher, especially on the back foot and within the mid range. Bevo is a great fighter. You know, he's one of the more talented and one of the greater fighters on the planet, no doubt about it. But once again, Bevo, in my view, you can get him to be a little bit more reclusive or tentative in terms of punching if you are actually able to get some counters in there and attack him a little bit to the body. We also seen this with Canelo Alvarez. The first four rounds, I thought that Canelo Alvarez actually lost, or excuse me, I thought that Canelo won the majority of the first four rounds against that of Dimitri Bivo. And then, of course, when Canelo Alvarez, when he really started to run out of stamina, I thought that Bivo then started to kind of take over. Not only that, but of course, also the size and, you know, the combined skill set of Dimitri Bivo and the jab that was setting off Canelo Alvarez's, you know, sometimes poor feet, you know, when it comes down to it, you know, or at least, you know, with with him putting, you know, a little bit too much weight on that front foot. Uh, you know, Bivol, of course, was able to offset that at Canelo Alvarez. However, against Arthur Bedebeev, it was a little bit different because Bedebeev is more similar in size to him. And once again, he had that stabbing jab to the body, which Canelo also employs. But because of Canelo Alvarez's size disadvantage, he wasn't really able to employ it kind of as much as what he wanted to. And once again, I don't think Canelo had great stamina for that fight whatsoever. But it is what it is. But anyways, you know, once again, Dimitri Bivol... When we talk about his high guard, I think that he had a very great high guard. But the thing that I also said in my fight prediction is that Bevo, that there was going to be certain times to where he had to, I'm not going to say abandon the high guard because the high guard can be a very good thing if you use it correctly. And of course, he was able to block a certain amount of the shots very, very well and use his foot movement and his lateral movement to the best of his ability. But sometimes Dimitri Bevo, I do believe that he stays up against the ropes a little bit too long and that sometimes he should try to tie up his opponent push him back or occupy the vacated space. Dimitri Bivol does not do that quite as well as, say, what a Usyk or what a Terrence Bud Crawford can do. Sometimes when you take a look at them versus pressure fighters, they let the fighters pretty much use their momentum or their attacks to the best of their ability. And then overall, they occupy the vacated space and they replace the opponent where they're going. And overall, they end up going in the space where their opponent formerly was. That's called occupying the vacated space. And even though Dimitri Bivo, even though he is great at lateral movement, he does not do occupying the vacated space quite as well as some of the other great defensive fighters that you would see, such as what a Floyd Mayweather Jr. is able to do or a Terrence Bud Crawford is able to do or an Alexander Usyk is able to do, Tyson Fury to a certain degree is able to do in certain moments. So once again, you know, Dimitri Bivo has a little bit of a problem with that. And I do think that that was a part of the reason why he ended up losing this fight and kind of, you know, losing some of the rounds down the stretch. You know, so that was one of the things that I was going to be worried about. Once again, you can also get Dimitri Bivol to be a little bit more tentative to throw, depending on how many punches you're able to get through. And Bivol did land a certain amount of punches within this fight, but I think that he did need to show Archer better Beev that he was going to have to really throw some punches within that of the mid range and really try to set Archer better Beev back and hurt him. And there just wasn't really ever, other than the first four rounds, I don't think that there was ever really a time to where Demetri Bivol really bit down on the bit or bit down on the bullet and really said, okay, you know what? I'm going to actually really try to push this guy back. I'm going to show him who's boss. I'm going to show him, you know, the business within this fight. I'm going to really show this guy that he's just not going to be able to bully me around the ring. And there were times to where, in my view, he had opportunities to do that because Arthur Bedebeev, in my view, actually was fighting way too much within the mid-range against Demetri Bivol within this fight. 
I think that Artebeta Beef should have been pressuring even a little bit more within this fight. He still showed decent technical boxing ability in a lot of the areas, but Dimitri Bivol is faster of hand and he's also faster of foot. I was just a little bit confused as to why Artebeta Beef was fighting so much within the mid-range. In my view, he needed to really let his hands go a little bit more. But the man is 39 years old, and on top of that, you know, Dimitri Bivol is a very, very tricky fighter. He's one of the top 10 pound-for-pound -pound fighters on the planet, or at least he was, because I don't really know where he's going to be after this loss against Artebeta Beef. But we'll see what ends up happening. But anyways, you know, once again, pretty much every strength and every fault that I said that both of these fighters were going to have and the attacks that they were going to employ, it pretty much overall ended up coming to fruition. Artebed Beef used that stabbing hand to the body, that lead hand stabbing hand to the body where he changes levels. Neither of these guys changed levels extremely well. But Dimitri Beef, of course, was able to land that pull counter right hand over the top quite a bit. But I don't think that there was ever really a right hand within this fight to where I took a look at it and I said, wow, that really set, you know, Arta Beta Beef back or that really made Arta Beta Beef think twice. I mean, of course, there were times to where he definitely stunned Arta Beta Beef a little bit, but I don't think that there was ever a right hand in this fight that I seen to where he landed it in the same way as what he did against Egoberto Zota Ramirez or some of the other fighters. But that being stated... There was very few punches that Artebeta Beef also landed against Dimitri Bivo within this fight, in my personal view, that he landed, you know, to the same amount of quality or quantity as what he did against some of his other opponents. You could tell that both of these fighters had the utmost respect for each other and that they knew what the other person brought to the table. I just think that Artebeta Beef did a little bit more within this fight. And that's why I ended up picking him within this fight. I thought that he was going to be more active. I thought that he had the better body attack. He proved to have the better body attack. I thought that Dimitri Bivol was not going to tie up Artebeta Beef extraordinarily well. That's exactly what ended up happening when it came down to it. And on top of that, I just think that Artebeta Beef was going to be more active, put on the more pressure. And I think that Dimitri Bivol, I was wondering, you know, how much he was really going to be willing to attack Artebeta Beef within that of the mid-range. In my personal view, Dimitri Bivol... He put on a very great fight, but he didn't put on the perfect fight. Because if he would have put on the perfect fight, in my personal view, he would have tied up Artebeta Beef a little bit more. He would have had a decent amount more of a body attack, in my personal view, especially with that lead hand down to the body and that right hand down to the body. Maybe try to fake down to the body with the lead hand and then come over the top, you know, with the right hand, kind of like how Shane Mosley did with that of Floyd Mayer the Jr., catching him with that good right cross straight to the jaw you know, or straight to the chin. In my view, Dimitri Bivol put on a very good fight, but a perfect fight? No, he didn't put on a perfect fight. And that's the reason, once again, why I predicted Arta Bedebiv the win. And that being stated, Arta Bedebiv did not really put on a perfect fight either. You know, in my personal view, uh, of course, he got hit with a certain amount of those right hands, but that was really expected. But I was expecting Arta Bedebiv definitely to be a little bit more, um, you know, aggressive within this fight. I thought that he kind of let Bivol get off a little bit more than what he really should have or that, you know, that he let Bivol kind of escape him a little bit more than what he needed to. But you could tell that the lateral movement and on top of that, the speed and the counterpunching ability of Dimitri Bivol, that it was giving him a lot of problems. You could tell that it was giving him a lot of issues. You know, so once again, congratulations to Mr. Artibeta Beef. If there is a rematch between these two fighters, which I would like to see because I think that both of these fighters are great fighters. Um... You know, who would I predict to personally win in a rematch? I believe that Arta Beta Beef would more than likely win in a rematch once again. And more than likely, once again, and I've already stated this, I thought that Arta Beta Beef was the right man to win. Both times I watched it, I scored it seven rounds to five. I thought that Arta Beta Beef, starting from round five onwards, completely controlled the fight, you know, at least controlled it a little bit more than Dimitri Bivol did in certain fashions. I thought that he had a better body attack. I thought that, you know, once again, that, you know, Dimitri Bivol, that the high guard is great, but... Sometimes he does not tie up his opponent super duper well. And against Arta Beta Beef, you're going to have to do that. You can't stay in the range too long because, of course, there's that dirty boxing. But once again, Dimitri Bivo, if you've watched him before against Canelo, you know, especially in some other fighters, even though eventually he usually does find an answer, he had never really fought a guy like Arta Beta Beef with his combined intellect and athleticism and size. You know, he did very great against Canelo Alvarez, but there's no offense against Dimitri Bivo, but you were supposed to do relatively great against Canelo because. Canelo was five foot seven and really, really a guy that is kind of a tweener between a middleweight and a super middleweight. You're a light heavyweight fighter. So at the end of the day, Dimitri Bivol really, you know, even though on paper Canelo was the favorite to win that fight, Dimitri Bivol really was supposed to win that fight. 
Now, he still won a certain amount of other great fights, but our Tibet Beaver is a different type of animal. You have to fight him differently than what you would some other fighters. And Dimitri Bivol, once again, there are certain attributes that he brings to the table to where he is better than that of our Tibet Beaver. In my view, he's better within that of the mid-range and better on the back foot probably than that of our Tibet Beaver. But Better Beaver is smarter, once again, and more technical than what a lot of people give him credit for, which is also a part of the reason as to why I think that he won this fight. That stabbing jab to the body, you know, was a big part of the equation. That right hand, you know, he definitely tried to land it. There were times where he did. And you could tell that the power definitely was still in the favor of our Tibet Beaver. You know, because when he would land power jabs or when he would land good right hands, it had Dimitri Bivol backing up the whole entire time. And, of course, when you take a look at their face after the fight, Dimitri Bivol, which, of course, isn't always the best indicator of who won the fight, but, you know, Dimitri Bivol, of course, he had a pretty swollen and bruised up left eye. Artibeta Beef, I think his face was a little bit red, but I don't think that, you know, he suffered any major damage within that of the fight. Bivol didn't suffer that much damage either, but... He looked like he definitely had more damage on himself within that of the latter part of the fight. But the question is now about both of these gentlemen is that where do they pretty much go from here? You know, where do these guys go from here? Where does Artibeta Beef go from here? Where does Dimitri Bivo go from here? And what does this now mean for Mr. Artibeta Beef and Dimitri Bivo for their pound for pound rankings as well? Because Bivo, of course, now does not any longer have any belts. And on top of that, he ended up losing to Artibeta Beef. And most of the time on my pound for pound list, the rule is, is that if you don't have any belts, and also if you recently took a loss, then in my view, you cannot be on my top 10 pound for pound list. But of course, Dimitri Bivo is one of the top fighters in the world. He did defeat Canelo. He did defeat Gilberto Zoto Ramirez, John Pascal, Joe Smith Jr. So it isn't like Dimitri Bivo still wouldn't have a case there. But in my view, he's going to be have to be right there with Devin Haney and right there overall with Tiafima Lopez and some of the other guys there that either A, don't have belts right now or recently took a loss or recently did not have the most impressive performances within their most recent performances. So it's going to be a little bit hard to dictate where Dimitri Bivol is. As for Artibeta Beef, after winning this fight, especially with the resume that he has and finally winning that fight that everyone was calling him for, Artibeta Beef, in my personal view, has to definitively and unlike, unarguably, be within the top five pound for pound. I don't even think that it's a debate. And right now, he was already within my top five pound for pound even before this. The only fighters right now that would be ahead of our Tibet Beef, debatably in my view, would be Usyk, Crawford, Inouye, and maybe Canelo Alvarez. But our Tibet Beef may even have to be at number four in my pound for pound spot right now because I don't think that Canelo Alvarez, of course, has fought you know anyone recent that has been within the top 10 or top 20 pound for pound. Now, he still might be above Better Beef just slightly because he's been a champion in more weight classes. You know, and I like Canelo as a fighter. I think that he's an all-time great fighter, debatably the greatest of his generation, of the Crawford and Usyk generation. But the thing is, is that when you talk about recent level of competition, even though I think that Jamel Charlo and also that Jaime Munguia, even though I think that those are relatively great wins, I think that those are both A-minus level wins at the very least. The thing is, is that when you take a look at Crawford, Last year in 2023, he beat and dominated Errol Spence. That was looked at as a fight between two top 10 pound for pound level fighters. More than likely a fight between two top five pound for pound level fighters. When you take a look at Usyk versus Tyson Fury, that was a fight that was between two top 10 level pound for pound fighters. On my list, two top five pound for pound level fighters. And when you talk about Inouye versus Stevon Fulton, that at the very least was a top 10 pound for pound fighter versus a top 20 level pound for pound fighter. Now, of course, Canelo, he did fight Jamel Charlo, but to be fair, Jamel Charlo was somewhat moving up in weight. Now, that fight was relatively even in terms of the weight for me because, you know, Jamel Charlo was really bigger than what a lot of people are <laughs> trying try to make him out to be. You know, but uh, when it came down to it, once again, those guys were pretty much in fights to where it was looked at as 50-50 to where a lot of people did not know who was coming out of that fight alive or who was coming out of that fight as the victor. So if Canelo Alvarez, you know, he's still going to have to be at number four or number five on my pound for pound list. But after this better beef, after he won against Bivol, he might have to jump up to number four. You know, I'm not quite sure if I would put him over guys like Inouye or Crawford or Usyk. I don't think that I would, you know, I don't think that this is enough to really quite put him at the number one pound for pound spot. But we'll see. But our to better beef, you know, he is 39 years old. We'll see where he goes from here. But it'll be very interesting to see if potentially he can make a run at the cruiserweight division. You know, because our Tibet Beef, I think, had fought certain cruiserweights, including Alexander Usyk, within that of the amateurs. You know, now maybe Usyk could have been a bit smaller. I can't remember. To be fair, 
Uh, you know, I think that Usyk actually won within that of the amateurs, even though it was a very tough fight from what I remember. And better be if I believe he even dropped Usyk with a good body shot. I believe a good left hook to the body within their amateur fight. You know, but they're scored a little bit differently. So I think that Usyk ended up winning the fight. But, of course, a rematch would be great between these two fighters just to see maybe if Bevo can do anything different. To see if Better Beef maybe can do anything different. And to see, you know, if maybe even one of them can get a potential stoppage. But in my personal view, Artsy Better Beef, he did enough to win the fight. This fight was not a robbery in my personal view. I thought that Better Beef, both times I watched it, did enough to win the fight. And at the very least, seven rounds to five. I thought that the scorecards were relatively accurate. I thought that maybe, maybe eight rounds to four was a little bit too wide. But I could maybe even understand eight rounds to four as well. Because if you give Arts a better beef, you know, one of those first four rounds, even one of them, then Arts a better beef pretty much got the second half of the fight to the point to where I thought that he did enough to win the fight. You know, so it is what it is. But congratulations to Mr. Arts a better beef, someone that now has to be undisputedly one of the top five pound for pound fighters in the world. Congratulations to the new undisputed champion of the world at the light heavyweight division. A very great fight, a lot of great technical ability, you know, but not, you know, neither of these fighters, in my view, are quite as great as what a Crawford or a Usyk or an Inoue would be. But they are, you know, probably about a half level or a level, you know, below those guys, you know. But of course, that's <laughs> that's a very, uh, a very, very, very high level uh, overall, once again, to, uh, you know, get. And of course, there also is the, you know, Victor of the potential fight between David Benavides and David Morrell. Do I think that either David Benavides or David Morrell will beat either Dimitri Bivol or that of Arte Better Beef? Absolutely not. <laughs> do I think that David Benavides would last a whole entire fight with Arte Better Beef? No, I do not. And I've been saying this for a very long time. David Benavides, in my view, although a relatively great fighter, he is a relatively one-dimensional fighter. He is a light heavyweight in disguise as a super middleweight. You know, when it comes down to it, and if he fights out to better Beaver Bevo, I don't see him winning either of those fights. And I think that he would more than likely get stopped against that of an art to better Beaver, probably within about, you know, seven to nine rounds. But we'll see what happens. But that first fight between David Benavides and David Morrell, that's going to be a great fight in general if that fight does happen, which I'm hearing is very, very possible next if it's not already set up. But congratulations to Mr. Arts and Better Beef. Great, great fight. But anyways, that pretty much is about it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll talk to you all later, and we'll see where both these gentlemen go next.